Hello. In this video, we will build an USB power delivery sync application using the Xcube TCPP software pack. First, we will introduce the software pack and its capabilities. After, we will list the requirements to build the following projects. Then, we will install the software pack. And we will start with the first project using the XNucleo SNK1M1 expansion board. Finally, we will show how to build a project based on your own custom board. The Xcube TCPP software pack is dedicated to build USB power delivery applications in sync, source or dual role mode, in standard power range, when the hardware is based on a STM32 MCU with a UCPD peripheral and with a TCPP product interfacing this MCU to the USB Type-C connector. Using this pack, there is no need to write any line of code and no need for a deep knowledge of the USB Type-C standard. The software pack can help for two hardware configurations. The first consists of a Nucleo and the X Nucleo dedicated to the application to build. The second is a custom board with a STM32MCU embedding the UCPD peripheral and the TCPP product related to the application. Finally, the software pack documentation is available in the Xcube TCPP pack in its documentation folder and is also accessible from CubeMX in the software pack section. Requirements At the software point of view, we will need STM32 CubeMX, at least release 6.11.0 The Xcube TCPP software pack, at least release 4.1.0 An IDE, such as STM32 Cube IDE And for debug, STM32 Cube Monitor UCPD These software are available on ST.com at the hardware level, for a project based on an expansion board, we will need the X-Nucleo SNK1M1 and a compatible Nucleo 64, so from series G0 or G4, or a custom board. We will also need a source device for debug. It can be a real device like a charger or the X-Nucleo SRC1M1 plugged on a Nucleo G0 or G4 with the source firmware. Software pack installation. Open STM32 CubeMX. In the software pack area, click on the install remove button. Select the ST Microelectronics tab. Scroll down to reach the Xcube TCPP software pack. And if it is not already installed, click on the Install button, then click on Close. Project with an expression board. In CubeMX, in the File menu, click on New Project. Select the Board Selector tab and type your Nucleo reference, in my case, Nucleo G071RB. Click on it and click on Start Project. Click on Yes. Again in the File menu, click on Save Project As. Click Right to create a new folder. I name it SNK1M1 and click on Save. Then in the Pinout menu, click on Clear Pinouts. Click on Yes. In the Software Pack menu, click on Select Components. Scroll down to reach the Xcube TCPP software pack. Select the Sync application and the board support for the Xnucleo SNK1M1. There are some warnings. Click on the warning in front of the application for details. So, the software pack needs the TCPP01 board part. So let's enable it. Back to the warnings. 
The application needs a USB PD middleware. Click on OK. In the middleware and software pack category, the USB PD middleware cannot be selected because it needs an instance of the UCPD peripheral. So, in the connectivity section, let's enable the UCPD1 in sync mode. Enable its interrupt and its DMA TX on channel 2 and RX on channel 4. You can choose any DMA channel except DMA channel 1, which is used by the software pack for ADCs. Now let's go back to the USB PD middleware and enable it for this peripheral. The default configuration is OK for us. And in the PDO, Power Data Object, General Definitions, we keep the default 5 volt PDO for this example, but you have the possibility to add PDOs depending on your sync in the USB power delivery standard power range, so up to 100 watts. This table, extracted from the USB power delivery standard, explains how to calculate a sync PDO value. Back to the software pack. The next warning is due to the need of an RTOS. The software pack is ready for free RTOS and Azure RTOS. Click on OK. In the middleware and software pack category, select free RTOS and enable it in CMC's V1 mode. Increase its total lip size to 7000 bytes. Back to the software pack again, there is still a warning which is due to the BSP because it needs an HL driver for ADC. Click on OK. So, in the analog category, select NADC and enable one channel. No need to do its configuration as it will be done by the software pack. Let's check the software pack. There are no more warnings. Click on OK. In the middleware and software pack category, scroll down to reach the Xcube TCPP and enable the application, the board part, and the board support. In the clock configuration menu, set the clock in PLL mode to set it at its maximum. And in the project manager menu, select your IDE, in my case STM32 cube IDE, increase the minimum IP size to C00, no change for the code generator, and in the advanced settings, remove the code generation for ADC as it will be done by the software pack. Right now, it is possible to generate the code, but for debug purpose, we will enable the tracer and GUI interface. In the utilities category, the tracer and GUI interface cannot be selected because it needs a new art. So, in the connectivity section, let's enable LPUART in a synchronous mode with interrupt NDMA TX, for example, on channel 3. In the parameter settings, increase the baud rate to 921,000 and 600 baud. As the Nucleo virtual com port is connected to PA2 and PA3, remap its pin with a left click. Now, in the Utilities category, enable the Tracer with LPUART. Then, in the USB PD middleware, set it as Tracer Source. And back to the Utilities section, 
enable the GUI interface. Set a hardware name, for example, Nucleo G071, and a type name, for example, SNK1M1. The configuration is completed. Let's generate the code. Click on Yes. And click on Open Project. CubeID has started and imported the project. Let's develop it. In Application Core, we can find the main. In TCPP, we can find the, the application startup. In the USB PD section, there are C files where the software pack wrote code specific to the sync device. And if you open USB PD DPM user, then USB PD PDO devs, this is the file where you can find the PDO definitions. Here, one sync PDO, and here are the tables for the source PDO, which, are, which is empty here, and the sync PDO, this is the PDO we have selected. Now we can build the project. No error, no warnings. And as I have this board connected to my computer, I start the debug. This is OK. Now I start STM32 Cube Monitor UCPD. I select the board and the port. I start measurements. And if I connect my sink to a source, we can observe the steps of the negotiation. And here is the monitoring for VBUS voltage and current. Here I disconnect the board from the source and here I connect it again. Project with a custom board. In CubeMX, in the file menu, click on New Project. In the MCU selector tab, in the commercial part number, type your MCU reference. In my case, it will be STM32G474RE in order to change from previous example. Select it and click on Start Project. Again, in the file menu, click on Save Project As. Click right to create a new folder. I call it SNK. Click on Save. Then, in the software pack menu, click on Select Components. Scroll down to reach the Xcube TCPP software pack. Select the Sync application and the board support for TCPP01. There are some warnings. Click on the warning in front of the application for details. The application needs the USB PD middleware and an RTOS. Click on OK. Here I will go faster as we have already done it in the previous example. First, in the middleware and software pack category, the USB PD middleware cannot be selected because it needs an instance of the UCPD peripheral. So let's scroll up to the connectivity section and enable UCPD1 in sync mode. 
enable it interrupt and it's DMA TX on channel 2 and DMA RX on channel 4 for example. Then enable the USB PD middleware. The default configuration with default 5 volt PDO is ok for us, but in the PDO general definition you have the possibility to increase the number of sync PDO and to set their values in the PDO sync tab. For the RTOs, enable free RTOs in CMC's V1 mode and increase its hip size to 7000 bytes. Let's check the software pack. There are no more warnings. Click on OK. Then back in the middleware and software pack category, select the XQTCPP software pack and enable the application and the board part for TCPP01. There are some warnings in the platform settings. We have to assign resources you have affected on your custom board for each requirement, NADC, and two GPIO outputs. First, the ADC for VBUS. In the analog section, select your ADC and its channel. In my case, it will be ADC1, channel 1, in single ended mode. Adjust the clock prescaler. Keep 12-bit resolution, enable the continuous conversion mode, and set the sampling time to a medium value. Now let's select a GPIO output for the TCPP01 VCC, in my case PB1. And another GPIO output for the TCP PDB, in my case PC10. And finally, in the Xcube TCP software pack platform settings, assign these resources to the application requirements. And in the clock configuration menu, set it in PLL mode to set it at its maximum. And in the project manager menu, select your IDE, in my case the STM32Cube IDE, increase the minimum IP size to C00, no change for the code generator, no change in the advanced settings. Now it's possible to generate the code. Click on Yes. And click on Open Project. CubeIDE started and imported the project. Let's develop it. And build it. No error, no warnings. Now you can start the debug on your custom board. To go further, you can refer to the software pack documentation included in the pack itself and also accessible through CubeMX. It also exists tutorial videos like this one explaining step by step how to create a sync or a source application. And finally, you can refer to the XQTCPP page on ST.com for further information. Thank you.